Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give God some praise on tonight here on Tuesday night, midweek. Hallelujah. Let's open up our mouths and give God the highest praise. Hallelujah. Who is worthy of all of our praise and adoration. It belongs to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift our hands. Let's lift up our voices. Let's shout unto the Lord with the voice. Jesus, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Oh God, we're gathered one more time, God. God, to give your name praise, oh God. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we invite your presence in this place, oh God. Let your glory fill this temple, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we speak into this atmosphere, oh God. We speak against any distractions and any hindrances, oh God. Oh God, we fix our minds on you tonight, oh God. Give your name the highest praise, oh God. We command the atmosphere to line up with the word of God in the name of Jesus. We cast and bind up everything that's not like you, O oh Father God. Let this mind which was in Christ be also in us on tonight, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, we exalt your name right now, God, as we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind to give your name praise, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we give your name praise, O oh God. O oh God, as your glory fills this place, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you right now, God. Hallelujah. Send your anointing in here, O oh God. Send your anointing in here, God. Send your healing in here, O oh God. Send, O oh God, your breaking anointing in here, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Send the healing, O oh God. Send breakthrough right now, God, in the name of Jesus. O oh God, we need you on tonight, God. We need Oh God, we are alive, oh God. We are alive unto you in 
the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, just have your way in this place, oh, God. Have your way, have your way. Have your way, have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on and open up your mouth hallelujah. and give God praise. Hallelujah. Come on and open up your mouth and give God thanks on this afternoon. Hallelujah. On this great evening, amen, hallelujah. For he has given us another chance on a Tuesday evening to come together and look at one another and see how blessed we truly are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you glad to be amongst the land of the living on this evening? Hallelujah. 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 I'm glad to be here on tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm glad to see my church family, my church sisters and brothers.
No more bondage, I am free. of Jesus, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
when I think of his unconditional love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. When I think of his endless love for me. Oh, God. Your evidence on tonight, hallelujah, Jesus. Your evidence on tonight.
It causes us to bow down, bow down. Your awesome presence. Woo. Your mighty presence. Huh. your hands on this grand evening hallelujah come on and give god the praise and glory in this place hallelujah come on from the youngest to the old come on to rest on your feet and give god what is so do unto him hallelujah come on and give god a wave off and up in here hallelujah hallelujah jesus oh come on and worship him come on and worship him Hallelujah. Anybody glad to be on here this evening? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and begin to protect your atmosphere. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, come on and speak to everything that's around you. And begin to till your field. Hallelujah. Begin to speak and begin to speak life begin to speak through the frustrations that you endured already from Sunday. Begin to speak and speak to them and say on tonight that this mountain will be moved. Hallelujah. Can I tell you something? That when God began to call forth Moses, hallelujah, he could not enter into the presence of the Lord any old type of way. But God began to speak to him. He said that the place that you stand is holy ground. So he commanded Moses to take off his shoes. I dare you on tonight to begin to lay down everything that you are going through. Anything that will be seen as nasty, as a hindrance in the sight of God on tonight, begin to lay it down. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
gonna do it. Hey. Oh, Jesus, I know that God is gonna do it. I don't care what anybody else believes, but I know God is gonna do it. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Do I have anybody else that can connect with my faith on tonight? Hallelujah. All I need is just about two or three people that can connect with me. Hallelujah. Yeah, God. All I need is just about two or three people that can connect with me on tonight. When two or three are gathered in his name, there he shall be in the midst. Hallelujah. God, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, if you begin to continue to worship God, you're going to feel his presence. We're going to feel your presence on tonight, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you for touching our minds on this evening. We thank you for touching our hearts. God, we thank you for dumping everything off, God, because you care about us, Jesus. Oh, because he cares. excited about being before God. Is that all right what you want tonight if we can just get excited before the Almighty God? Hallelujah. Come on and just release your worship in the house. Come on and clap your hands, everybody. Hallelujah. On tonight, it takes a sacrifice. It's going to take your push. It's going to require you to get out of yourself. Hallelujah. You might have came in here one way. Hallelujah. But if you Hallelujah. Somebody said that I still need this release. I may didn't get everything that I needed on Sunday because I still wanted to hold on to it. Hallelujah. But you ought to make your choice on tonight. It don't matter that it's a Tuesday. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty in this house. It don't matter that it's a Tuesday evening, but God wants to do something. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to say, break out, break out, break out. Huh? Hallelujah. Begin to just prophesy just like Ezekiel did. Hallelujah. Begin to just prophesy and begin to just break out from what you're in. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm going to soar. I'm going to soar. I'm going to fly. Hallelujah. I will not die, but I will live. Evangelist, we can stir up something in here on tonight. She said that you got to open up your mouth and begin to prophesy, begin to speak to every generational curse. Hallelujah. Begin to get every generational curse before your mind on tonight and begin to speak over that thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I tell you on tonight, I just need two or three people that can get with me. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Yes, there is a dance that's going to go forth, Lord. Just like you commanded the prophet Jesus. You said, can these problems live? And my response is yes.
your hands. Uh, can I begin to tell you something? Uh, that there is something that's about a dance uh, that God honors. Hallelujah. When you begin to pick them up and put them down, uh, this praise, it represents uh, that you can begin to just shake off everything. Uh, hallelujah. Begin to just speak to yourself. Uh, and begin to just flex everything off of you. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of you just need to step out in the aisle. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, somebody just think that I'm talking on tonight. Uh, some of you need to step out in the aisle uh, because some of you are heavy on tonight. Uh, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. But God has uh, candy drop bones live. Uh, and what is your response? a word that's in the house on tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, but the preacher just can't come up any type of way. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody said, I'm on the front line. Oh, I'm first the fence. Hallelujah. I refuse for the enemy to come in and mess with my brothers and my sisters. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I'm going to stand before this choker. And I'm going to put up the shield of faith. Oh! Devil, you can't come up in any type of way. You might try it. Oh, but your ear, oh my God, your attack will fail. Oh, your attack will fail. Oh my God, your attack has no choice but to fail. Hallelujah. If you believe it on tonight, come on and give God a hallelujah. Oh, come on, D. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I bust out in a minute. Oh, my. They tell your neighbor, said, I bust out in a minute. Oh, I bust out in a minute. I bust his face in a minute. I will bust the devil's face in a minute. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I play it. Oh, my Lord. Oh, Jesus, let us get ready for an offering. But I feel that thing. Somebody just release it to the atmosphere and say, this ain't no play play. Somebody said, this ain't no play play. 
This ain't no play play. Amen. This time we're giving it to take up our offering. Amen. Please follow the usher from the rear. Those on my left, please stand. Follow the usher from the rear. Yes. Thank you. 
recognize you tonight. Oh, but something's being released in the atmosphere. you, God. I feel a shift in the atmosphere because, God, we thank you. Yes, God. Give it honor to God who is the head of my life and God for my husband, my children, everyone in their respective places. I thank God for my apostles who are not here on this day. Y'all, I feel good. I'm telling you, God is good. We're going to 
gonna jump right in. We're gonna let God have his way. But I just wanna let you know my topic is get ready for the shift. You ought to be excited about the shift because he was all up in my message and you have to get your mindset together to be prepared for the shift that is coming. I don't know how you sit down on God and not be getting yourself prepared for the shift, but you need to get prepared for the shift. My subtopic is wake up watchmen. My scripture is Ezekiel 3, 16 through 17. And it says, now it came to pass at the end of the seven days that the word of the Lord came to me saying, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore, hear a word from my mouth and give them warning from me. What we have to understand is a watchman is a person who will give you, who will give the alarm at the approach of the enemy or anyone that is coming into the vicinity of the area. They will blow a trumpet in the ears of the sinner and endeavor them to wake up. It is time for the watchman to get on your post and to sound the alarm of the enemy because the enemy is fast at approach. We are in a time where we need to be, we need to have more Peters, more people who are more outspoken, people who are ready to hear the word of the Lord. You have to prepare yourself to be Peter, to be bold in this situation, to be bold in this time and era that we live in to speak the word of God. We have destructive doctrine, which is 2 Peter 2, 1 through 3. If you have your Bibles turned there. Second Peter chapter two, one through three. But there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them and bring them bring on themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the, the way of truth will be blasphemed. By covetousness they will exploit you with deceptive words for a long time. Their judgment has not been idle and their destruction does not slumber. We are in a generation where the time where the, we're in a generation where the people are out here and their words are smooth. They have a slick tone. And if you are not in your word and you are not meditating on the things of God and if you are not staying in a fast before the Lord, then you will become subject to the things of what they say. And it's not so much of the big conniving words that they use, it's the small things. We know that they will come in and use and change just one little small word and we won't, we won't catch it because you don't have a keen ear to the spirit to discern the things of what they are saying. So the enemy has come in and crept in into the house of God to stir up, to, to cause a great falling away. But how much, how you know, how much, many of you know you have to be ready for the shift. The shift that is coming, there is a shift of the enemy and there is a shift and a shaking in the house of God that God is getting ready to stir up his people. He is getting ready to bring forth those who are been preparing themselves, who are ready, those who have been in the back burner, those who have been seeking him, those who have been fasting before him and praying and seeking his face. And they're going to come to the forefront and God is getting ready to use them to stir up the fallow ground. And for those of you who do not know what fallow ground is, fallow ground is that has been plowed and readied for sowing, but then is withheld and allowed to lie useless and unproductive. 
Now, in the farming industry, fallow ground, what the farmer will do is they will till up their soil so that way they won't use it for a while until the soil has become perfectly pH balanced. That means it is ready to receive a harvest. And we cannot receive a harvest if our ground is hard, if it's tough, and it's got thorns in it, and it's got weeds in it. And what do I mean by weeds, thorns, and things of that sort? It means you've been listening to gossip. It has stirred up your heart. It has caused you to not hear the things of the Lord. You're too into tune to TV and not into tune into things of God. You're too into tune of what's going on with your children. Your children got you distracted and you can't really hear the things of God. And then your soil is not tilled up and it's not fallow ground so that the soil can become pH balanced. It can become be able to be used for the kingdom and the glory of God. God cannot plant seed into you because you are not ready to be to receive the seed because you still have thorns that will grow up and choke out the seed. We'll be coming from mm, y'all forgetting that. We'll be coming from Hosea 10 and 12 so that you can get an understanding of what fallow ground is. Hosea 10 and 12 says, Sow for yourselves righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness on you. Meaning we have to prepare ourselves on a daily basis when we are at work, work is a distraction. We have people who come in, and I'm witness to that. We have people that will get on our everlasting nerves, and we try to hide it, and we be like, oh, God bless you, God bless you. But as soon as you turn your back, you talking about them, and you have not done the work of the Lord because God sees everything, and he hears everything, and you're not preparing yourself for the shift. There is a spiritual shift that is coming that God is seeking for those whom he can use. And if your ground has not been tilled up for him to be able to use you, you're going to be left behind, and you can't be used. So now he has to move on to find those that will, that have an ear to hear him, so that they can be used for the kingdom of God. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, get ready for the shift. We stand in a place where we want God to use us more than ever before. We want God to use our children. We want God to guide our footsteps. But what are you doing for God to do these things in your life? What shift, what preparations are you making for God to be able to do these things in your life? How have you prepared your children for God to do these things in their life? It's good for you to be in the presence of God, but are you teaching and training your children? Are you showing them the right way? Are you teaching them under the, under the presence of God? Are you showing them the things of God so that they can come up in the admiration of God? So that they, when they go to school, they're not afraid to speak and proclaim the goodness of God because yet they are souls too. And yet we still, they still have to be prepared for the shift that is coming. Because it is a shift that's coming that is going to be able to manipulate children and manipulate people who are weak. Satan comes after the weak. He does not come after the strong. He come after the weak. Because he knows if you are not strong enough, that it's easy to manipulate you and it's easy to have you where you can second guess the things of God, second guess what the prophet spoke unto you. And then you'll be sitting there wondering, well, they spoke a word to me, but it didn't come to pass. It didn't come to pass because you are a double-minded man and unstable in all your ways. So you are not prepared for the things of God. You are not prepared for the shift. We have to trust God and know that God is moving the things that he's doing. We have to have our eyes and our spiritual eyes open to the things of God to be able to see in the spiritual realm, not in just in the natural realm, but you have to see more so in the spiritual realm because the things of God are moving spiritually, not carnally, not in a physical manner, but more so in a spiritual manner. We have to be like Paul. We have to seek him and pray daily and pray constantly so that God will open up our eyes. Just as when Paul was in the it was getting prayed over. The scales fell from his eyes. We have to pray that God will allow the scales to fall from our eyes and it, so that we can see the things of God and that we will be used in a spiritual manner. We have to trust God in this season. 
We can't sit there and wait for the, and, and, and run to the man or woman of God. And you have to, te- yes, you go to your leaders and you go to your pastors and you seek after them for their guidance and their counsel. But when is it going to come to a time where you seek after God himself? When will you trust him for yourself? Because if you never learn to trust God for yourself, you can never move forward. You can never go to the next step. There is a spiritual move where God wants to bless his people. He wants to take them there. And then the, I don't know, the way that God gave it to me, and I'm going to try my best to explain it the way he gave it to me, so bear with me. He gave me Job. And when you look at Job, we're going to look at Job, how Job had everything. And Satan went before the Lord, and God saw that Job was so faithful. And the only thing that I could imagine was God was sitting on his throne with his hand on his head, his head in his hand, and he was like, well, have you tried my servant Job? Do you know how faithful Job had to be for God to actually call his name and give him to Satan and refer him to Satan? His resume was referred to Satan. And so God, had, God said, have you tried my servant Job? And so Satan was like, Mm, no, I guess I haven't. So guess what? So Satan, God was like, go on down there. Try him for me. God had no doubt when it came to Job that Job would not question the things of God. Job, was, Job didn't understand what was happening, but he knew that in all actuality, I'm still going to trust God regardless of the situation. Regardless of what I go through, Job lost everything. He lost his children, his home. He lost his servants. He lost animals. He lost flock. But in the midst of it all, Job, even he kept his faith. But even in the midst of that, his faith was even tested because Job got a little weary. And sometimes we get a little weary, and so we have to continue to keep praying. Even when Job was faced with his friends who he thought was his best friends, how they tested him. So we have to know that even we will even be tested by our friends and our family. But in the midst of all that, Satan went back to Jesus to God and he said, Well, you won't you he still trusts you because you got a hedge around him. God said, I'll remove the hedge, you just can't kill him. So has your name come up before the Lord that he can say, I trust you. They're ready for the shift. And the thing that I love the most is, and God gave it to me, God said, the one thing that I want you to get is that, yes, Job gained everything back that he lost, and it was greater than before. But have you looked at the aspect of his faith? The fact that Job's faith was tested and his faith was greater than before. So if you imagine losing everything, and you still trust in God, but you get a little weary. And so you know that the shift came so that even in the shift, Job's faith was Job's faith was greater than before. So when we go through situations, we have to know that our faith has to be greater than before because the shift that comes and the things that come to tear us down actually come to build us up. We can't sit here and wait and sit there and petty ourselves and worry and wait for people to say, oh, girl, you doing bad. Man, you know you should be doing better than this. What happened to you? There's nothing happening to me. I'm grateful for the things that I go through because these things come to build me. They come to mold me. They come to shape me because the shift that is coming, I'm being prepared mentally. I'm being prepared spiritually. And so we stand here in awe of the holy presence of God saying thank you for everything that you have already done. And we thank you for every trial and tribulation that you bring that is tested and brought before us. But God, we pray that you will allow us to stand the test of time so that we won't fall short of your glory. Mm. Get ready for the shift. God need the watchmen to wake up. There are many who are watchmen and they wake up at a certain time and they got comfortable with this certain time. I'll wake up at three o'clock, I'll wake up at one o'clock, two o'clock, or I'll do it before I go to bed. And you'll give God a certain time and then when you get ready to go to sleep, you're trying to figure out, well, why can't I stay asleep? Because you gave God what you thought was your best. But God said, can you pray with me but for a little longer? And so the watchmen are the ones who are on the wall watching to see when the enemy arise, see when things happen from afar off. And so if you are asleep and you are not in the presence of God, you cannot see the enemy coming. So now every fiery dart that is being thrown at you has been attacked, is attacking you. And not only you, but it is your family that is being attacked. Your church members, your church family that is being attacked. Because you have to look at the people that are around you. You have to look at the co-workers that are around you. These are people that are being attacked because you choose to sacrifice your you choose to love your sleep more than you want to sacrifice 
the things of the sacrifice your flesh. So God is calling for the watchmen to wake up because this is the hour that we are needed. This is the hour that we are here to sound the alarm and to get cause the people to tell them to get ready for the shift because there is a great battle that is going to take place in the spiritual realm and you have to have a keen eye, you have to have a keen ear, you have to have a keen heart, and you have to be in the things of God to understand where God is going to shift you to. You cannot sit there where you're comfortable at. You have to come out of your comfortable state and get into the place of God. You have to get into the face of God. You have to prostate yourself before God, even when it seems uncomfortable, even when you seem embarrassed and you're worried about what people are going to say. Cast those thoughts down. Worry about the things of God and worry about how God sees you. Worry about how God works and see, feels on, feel on you. Worry about how the presence of God will love on you. Get into his presence. Show God that, God, I am here and I need you more than ever. What does a baby do when they want to be held? They lift up their arms. When we go into worship, we lift up our arms and we tell God, thank you. We want you to hold us. We want you to caress us. We want you to show us what is coming into pass. So we need the things of God to be in our lives because we're getting ready for this shift that's getting ready to take place in the spiritual realm. So when you sit there and you quench the things of God, you're telling God, God, I don't want it. God, I don't want you. God, I don't need you. And God is telling you, you need all of this and more. So when you feel uncomfortable, when things come your way and it make you uncomfortable, when the enemy come to attack your mind, you have to stand on the word of God and say that I am the child of God. I am what he says that I am. I am the anointed one. You have to know that God has called you and he's using you for a purpose. to teach our children to get into the presence of God. When we sit here and we say that, you know, our children, because we bring them to church, and I'm not, not, not talking about anybody in here because I know everybody in here, we, we teach our children. But this is for the body of Christ. There are too many of us who we say that we are in, the, we are in Christ, but we leave our children behind. So while you're being elevated partially because it's not a full elevation because you have left part of you behind. So when you get comfortable with your child, well, I'm going to give them this tablet so it can keep them quiet in church. You play with this. Y'all know how we do. You play with this and you be quiet. Don't worry about that. Don't. Shh. Here you go, there go your favorite game. There go your favorite toy. I'm gonna give you something to chew on. Shh. Put your head down here and chew on this. Y'all know how we do. But God is seeing all of this. And because you think your leaders don't see this or you think nobody is seeing this, God sees all. So because your child is being left behind or your children are being left behind because you choose to let them do these things. Now this is a generation that is coming up that says, well, I know how to praise God, but I don't have a relationship with God. There are too many churches that have people who are, have a form of godliness, but don't really have Christ in them like they say they do and then you wonder why so many things happen well it's because when you have a generation that is coming up in Christ and they are taught the ways of Christ and now you have a generation behind them that is pampered by tablets toys and food and games and candy and just sit here and be quiet don't bother me while I'm in while I'm doing this okay well now you have allowed the enemy to come in and in the sanctuary that is full of the presence of God, but there's a crack. 
that he's uh, been able to creep in through and because your children sit there and they're, oh, I'm just, I'm just sitting here. I don't got nothing. That doesn't, okay, well, watch this. The enemy will come in and then you start to wonder why your children act like this. When, where did you get this behavior from? When did you start to feel like you got to go out there and be seen and do all these other things? It's because this is a generation that has been taught by technology and not the ways of God. You can tell them, oh, yeah, they got the Bible on it. No, 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 that ain't the same. It ain't the same. Because when the shift get ready to take place, now you have a group that's going to be shifted and a group that's going to be left behind. So when the anointing steps in and you begin to realize that this shift is not just for me, it is for my house. The Bible says that for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. That means no one left behind. I believe the military has a model of no man left behind. If I'm not mistaken, any military people here, am I right? Okay, no man left behind. But so why is it that we would choose to leave our children behind and not worry about their soul and their well-being in the things of God? Because just as you want God to shift you in the spiritual realm, you should be wanting your children to be shifted as well. Your next generation after that. Because God is not a, God, is not a God that stops at one generation. He keeps going. He will hold a covenant with you that say, he says, I will bless your generation and your seed and your seed to come. So when we prepare ourselves, we're also having to prepare our children. And when we prepare our children, this watch, this, this is what we learn. We learn that, oh, we don't have faith like we, we don't have, we don't have patience like we thought we did. Because God, I didn't know this child did this and it got on my nerves. No, God used that to show you, you. So now you know what area you need to be worked on in, and now you know what area your child needs to be worked on in. So now it's a phase where you're working on you and them. So now you sit there, and then you're you're worried about well, every time I turn around, I got to go out to this school. Mm-hmm. You're going out to the school because did you cover your child before you left? Before they left? Mm-mm. You did not. You decide to say, "Have a good day." Well, guess what? There's a shift coming, mm, my God, and the shift that is coming, and if you choose, so choose to leave your children behind, then guess what? They're going to be lost because the enemy has crept in, and he is going to snatch them faster than you can imagine. See, the world likes to give a false narrative of love. Everybody in here should know about that, that type of love. There's a false narrative of love that will give, they'll give you everything you want, but you don't need. There's a difference. God will give you everything that you need. He will give you everything that you need, but the world will give you everything that you want. And the things that you want are the things that don't mean you any good. So when you get caught up in wanting the things that you want, you'll start to drift away. Your children will start to drift away, and you'll be like, well, God, I didn't know they was going to get into this. I didn't know they was doing this. Mm, what is your prayer life like? What is your fasting life like? How, how often have you sat them down and talked to them to find out, well, baby, did you pray today? Well, did you seek the Lord today? Well, come here, let's cover you under the blood because there's a shift, and I need you to be with me. So when we get ready to do these things, we have to be like Paul. Paul was tormented for a while. He was agitated by this woman who was... Uh, under the spell of demonic spell because she could tell the truth, but it was a demon. See, the demon can tell the truth, but it was a false narrative. She told the truth, but it was in the false narrative. So Paul walked around, Paul and Silas walked around for a few days and they was agitated by this. Paul was agitated. So Paul didn't jump immediately because Paul had to seek the Lord about this thing. And this is what I like about Paul because Paul didn't just jump in and say, I'm going to cast you out. No, no, no. Paul used wisdom because when he did this, he had to seek God's face. So when he began to seek God's face, Paul had to get into a situation where he had to understand there is a shift taking place. And the shift that is taking place that I need to be in so I can do the things what God want me to do. So Paul had a keen spiritual eye and a keen spiritual ear. And he had on the salvation, he had on his righteousness and everything else that guarded himself. And so Paul turned around and looked at the woman and he said, you, you devil, get out of here. I'm tired of you tormenting me. So be gone from this place. And so soon as everything happened and transpired, 
the shift took place. What happened when the shift took place when the demon came out of the young woman? Her, her, her owners were agitated. They were angry. Why were they angry? Because they no longer could make money off of her. So when you shift in the spiritual realm, it's a shift to agitate the things of the world. It's a shift to stir up the water that, is come, that has come. And when you get ready to stir up the water, it's not going to be pleasant to you in a sense. And it's definitely not going to be pleasant to the people in the world because now you're taking their livelihood. But what they don't understand is the things that are taking place is it's for their benefit. It's for their good. But because they can't see this, we have to testify on the goodness of Jesus. So when we begin to do these things, Paul said, Paul stood there and he was, him and Silas, they were locked up because of this situation. And so in the situation of them being locked up, <clears throat> and it's crazy because I think my husband brought it up, somebody brought it up, and it was crazy because the whole time I was on the truck, God was dealing me with this. The whole time that <clears throat> they went through this, not one time did Paul and Silas complain. When Peter got in, he was locked up in prison, not one time did he complain. And it's so simple to understand that when you go through and you read scripture and you begin to study scripture and God begin to reveal things to you, you begin to understand that don't complain when you go through. Don't complain when you begin to hurt in your body. Don't complain when the enemy comes to torment you. Count it all joy because you have been counted worthy to go through these things. So in the midst of this, Paul and Silas went in, they went in prison, they was locked up, and they were sitting there, and they began to sing praises and give alms to the Lord. <clears throat> and in the midst of this, it says that there came an earthquake that shook their chains loose. So there's another shift. So there are some shackles that have been in your family that you have been praying for. And it seems like it's just been there and it's been staying and it won't go nowhere. And God says, because of your midnight hour prayer and your midnight hour praise, God says that I'm going to shake the chains loose from off of your family. I'm going to shake the generational curses from off of you, your children, and your family. Those that you've been wanting to be saved, God said, I'm going to bring them in. So you still got to trust God. Even though you might not see it right now, get ready for the shift. Prepare your mind for the shift. We have to prepare ourselves for this shift that is getting ready to take place. It is not going to be comfortable. It has not come to make us comfortable. It has come to elevate us. It has come to tear down the things that have been holding us captive. So when we go through this shift, don't complain about tell God thank you. Tell God thank you for the things that you go through because your faith is being tested. The faith that you have might be the size of a mustard seed, by but by the time it get done, you already spr it's done sprouted into a tree. And a mustard seed, it grows into a very large tree. It's not nothing small. So when you begin to stay in the place of God and God has tilled up your fallow ground, he can take that seed and finally plant it because the soil has been pH balanced. That it is now ready to receive a harvest. It is ready to go into its next level. It is ready for this next shift. It is ready for the next upbringing. So when it gets ready to go into this fell, when it goes into the fallow ground, now it begins to be watered. It begins to be nurtured. Nothing can come in and choke it out. Nothing can come in and cause it to wither and weary. No drought, no nothing, because it's in its perfect timing. God has perfect timing and the thing that we have to get ourselves to is that we cannot rush God we have been in a place where we have gotten to a place where this generation we begin to rush God and I know a lot of us always hear it that we want to we are a microwave generation generation we want things quick now and in a hurry well mm, I don't know about y'all but a lot of times when you microwave certain foods it ain't good because it, it's, it's either overheated or it's underheated and you put it back in there and it's nasty, it's stuck to the side and ain't no good and you throw it away. Okay, so when you are quick, fast, and in a hurry, <laughs> when you are quick, fast, and in a hurry, God can't do nothing with that. Because guess what? You done 
start it out, this is the best way I can give it to you. This is what God showed me. When you start it out and you know you're about to run a marathon, you starting off sprinting like, sprinting like you're running a 100-meter dash. Mm. But you can't make it to the end because you already burn out. So now that you want everything quick, fast, and in a hurry, it's going to burn out. And now it's no good because you can't make it to that level. You can't make it to the next section of that place. So now when we are sitting here and we're worried and we're, we're, we're trying to get ourselves together, we have to know that God is with us. God is preparing us for this shift. He is preparing us for this next anointing. He is preparing us for this next financial move. He is preparing us mentally, physically, spiritually. Not only us, but our children and generations to come. Let your light so shine in the world. There are too many of us that are going out there. Well, we, it shines. It's pretty. We say it shine in church, but it be pretty dim. And we act like we just all bright, and that thing just is it's flickering. It's flickering. And you walking past everybody, and like, God, yeah, hey, how you doing? God bless you. No, baby. Mm, how you doing? But we have to prepare ourselves for this next shift. So I am grateful that God has blessed us to be in a place that we can get in a shift, that he has blessed us with great leaders that is preparing us for this shift, that is preparing us mentally, spiritually. He is covering us. There are many times when I am on that truck and I say, I thank God for my leaders because I'm telling you the things that I've seen, the things that are occurring, I thank God that he has placed me under great leadership because the shift that is coming, they are, they are like generals in the army. And they strategically place certain people, certain places, so they can train up other people. So when the army is intact, everything is going intact, now we can prepare ourselves, and now we can move, everything can move smoothly. And I think about that a lot. And so we have to prepare ourselves, get ready for the shift, and watchmen, get on the wall and begin to continue to watch. Don't satisfy your flesh. When God waking you up and you thought you did, you thought you did the best you done, done, and you laid your head down and God was like, get on back up. Get up. Don't satisfy your flesh. Get up. Because you might miss the fact that there is a witch passing through and you can't see it. And now you're trying to figure out why all hell done broke loose. It's because you decided not to get on the wall. So I stand here and I say, get prepared. Get ready for the shift. Amen. We're going to have prayer. Dear Heavenly Father God, we come to you, God, thanking you for this night. We thank you for the moment and the opportunities that you have given us to praise you, to worship you. God, we pray, O oh Lord, that you will touch every soul and every vessel in here on tonight, Lord, those who are even watching by television, O oh God. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you will till up their fallow ground, O oh God, that their hearts will be able to receive what you are getting ready to do, O oh Heavenly Father God. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you will bless us, O oh God, that we will not miss out on the things that are getting ready to take place and what you are about to do in our lives, in our children's lives, and God, in the generations to come. And Lord, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Clap your hands, amen, for Minister Kanisha on tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, let's put our hands together, amen, and clap for the woman of God. Hallelujah. Can we thank God on tonight that we sit amongst ministers of the gospel that have a prophetic mouth? Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm excited that we just don't have any type of ministers of the gospel that just say something just to be saying something. But can I confirm, woman to God, that you was in the house and that you were speaking accurately from God? As you begin to talk over there, God began to show me imagery. And he began to confirm, your, confirm the word of God. God said that the word of God is living. But 
what has happened is that the body of Christ has allowed the enemy to come in to allow them to devalue the word of God. So what has happened is, is that when the people of God go forth, our hearts have got to a posture of being hardened. And we think that the people of God are just ministering and just saying things, but God said that my word is living for you to be able to change your now. And what God began to show me, woman of God, he began to show me a shovel. And I began to see the shovel hitting hard surface like a brick. What can a shovel do when it's hitting hard material? The word of God talks about having a stony heart versus having a heart of flesh. So after he began to show me that the shovel couldn't dig any longer, he began to show me a fetus growing inside of a woman's womb, confirming that the fetus can grow, the fetus can develop because it is connected to the umbilical cord. Hallelujah. So we are connected to a prophetic ministry. But I release unto you and implore unto you by the mercies of God on tonight, do not let the enemy devalue the word that's being spoken to your ears. Can we clap our hands on tonight? Somebody say, I thank God for the prophetic ministry that's in this house. Come on and say it again. Say, I thank God for the prophetic ministry that's in this house, that we have a right now word that can come in and change our situation. Oh, my God, I get excited, amen, when I begin to hear the authenticity of the word of God. Hallelujah. Can we do another honorable thing on tonight? Can we clap our hands, amen, for our exceptional leadership, Apostle Neil and Apostle Prophetess Ann Harris? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We salute our leadership on tonight. And come on, we want to do another thing. We want to honor, amen, our associate pastor. Come on and give it up to Pastor Corsino on tonight. Pastor, do you have any words that you want to expound on tonight? You sure? Amen, amen. Do we have any announcements? <laughs>